This segment has to do with uh, African Americans, and the question is, have they benefited under uh, President Barack Obama? The short answer is no. Have they suffered under Obama? In my opinion, yeah, because there are more uh, incidences of uh, out and out the racism and attacks on the uh, black community uh, now than there were before he came into office. But here is a economist uh, who has a very similar opinion to mine. Many African Americans were excited, ecstatic when President Barack Obama was elected, the first African American president ever, the 44th president of the United States. But the question many uh, still continue to ask is, have African Americans benefited from this historic presidency? Well, in a new book, Julian Malvo, economist, uh, talks about this particular issue. The book is called, Are We Better Off? Race, Obama, and Public Policy. She and I have talked about exactly who has benefited the most from the election of President Barack Obama? No, but we're not worse off either. Essentially, um, there's a line in the book I use to say, uh, yes, we can. No, he didn't. He didn't push us forward, but he didn't move us backward. He missed an opportunity. Okay, we say missed an opportunity specifically in what area, in what way? In every area, Roland. He has, he has targeted certain communities, but he's never targeted the African-American community. So, for example, I would have loved to see the kind of passion uh, when he talked about transgender issues that he had to talk about African-American issues. He never said to any school, I will withhold your civil rights money if you don't, uh, if you discriminate. We got black kids thrown out of school three times as often as white kids are. We have black kids suspended, expelled, all of that. Three times as likely, less likely to graduate, all of that. But we can go down the list and look at any number of other things. He simply has not been a champion of African Americans in the same way that he's been a champion of others. One, one of the things, one of the areas that, that we discussed on this show that has been very contentious has been the relationship between this president and HBCUs. Yes. Parent Plus Loan. And that, that, that's been real hard for a lot of HBCU supporters who say, Mr. President, that's my man, but they look at well, and Jim Clyburn has been the best, the most staunch advocate of HBCUs. And as you know, uh, when this happened, I was the president of a bit of college. This was the most ridiculous thing that I had ever experienced in my lifetime. That an African American president would put our money on the table, $85 million that Bush put in there. Let me repeat myself, that Bush put in there that he was going to take out. That was money for our infrastructure. It was money that was designed to help us catch up in terms of the technology that we didn't have and things like that. It was insanity that this president would do that. And then there's a chart in the book, $85 million in 2008 down to $78 million by 2014. Um, in addition, the regular awards part B from Title III going from 238 million down to 223 million. Now, some people will say it was sequester, all that, but there was an insensitivity to HBCUs and a sense that we didn't, quote, deserve the money. Now, the 85 million, uh, after a lot of back and forth, it was restored, but it was a lot of back and forth, and really it put HBCUs and the president at odds very early in his administration, and that should not have been the case. Do you believe that we talk about what we didn't get, we could have gotten? And we've had this discussion, we have both of them on, Dr. Cornell Webb, Tampa Smiley, and so many others. And I've said this because I've seen it. I've said that black folks are still at the inauguration parade. <laughs> and everybody else left that day. That we have been so happy with the symbolism yes. of a black first family that the vigor in which we demanded, well, I'll say this way, he's the first black president, but also the 44th president. We focused on the first black mm -hmm. and forgot the 44th and what we demanded of the previous 43. Exactly. Well, you know, my, my line is, you won't get fed in your mama's house if you don't bring your plate to the table. 
We didn't bring our plate to the table. We sat around, we so happy. Even members of the CBC that I talked to, they were not prepared to jam him. They, you know, I mean, I think that uh, in our, the speech he gave at uh, CBC, you were there, when he started talking, put on your marching shoes. That was offensive, that was condescending, and I think maybe some of them got it then. But the fact is that the CBC, many in the CBC, were too proud of him to jam him. And jamming him was not an act of disrespect. It was an act of utmost respect, because here's what we end up with, Roland. We end up with a 45th president, whether they're Democrat or Republican, who if we say to Hillary, why are you cutting money from HBCUs? She will say, why are you jamming me? You didn't jam Barack. And that's, so, see, that becomes a part of it. So how are you, you going to respond when black folks say, well, Julia, you just hating. You just, I mean, you just hating. I would say read my book. It's not, a, a, you read it, it's not hateful. It's um, balanced. I mean, initially we called the book ambivalence because it really, I mean, I'm proud of President Obama. You can't be black and not be proud of President Obama. Every time he sort of swags on to Air Force One, I'm like, yes. At the same time, I want to know what he's doing for our people. Symbolism and substance yeah, and are I both important, but you, but you kind of need both. You need both. You don't need just one. And what we have done, too many black people have drunk the symbolism Kool-Aid. And it's Kool-Aid. And when you walk away and step back, even with the pardons that he's done, which I think are great, I've got 9,000 people in federal prisons for uh, minor drug offenses. He's pardoned, well, I guess, around 300 or so. Uh, it's, 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 Is it more? No, it's more than that, but it's but some folks say, look, that he needs to rapidly, first of all, even to meet the goal that he has, he's to rapidly increase it. And, and, and he can do a blanket. He can do a blanket part, but he won't. And if he did, uh, reparations. I mean, I don't think that white folks are ever going to write black people a check that says, here's your money. But I do think that this president could... Uh, appoint a commission and the of course the Institute of the Black World has a commission on reparations on which I serve and have asked him to appoint a John Hope Franklin commission on reparations to look at some of these issues there's so many things nobody can do anything in that let's see eight months nobody can do anything why don't you brother for once be real black for me for once just lift your fist up or something um, he's not gonna do it and the fact is that we haven't pushed him and now we really can't all right. The book is called Are We Better Off? Race, Obama, and Public Policy. Dr. Julian Malvo, the forward is by Donna Brazil. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. She pretty much hit it out of the park as far as what Obama has done for the black community. You know, there's more that could be said, but what's the sense of saying it? He's getting ready to leave office, and as uh, she indicated, uh, we are definitely not better off uh, than we were when he got into office. And in my opinion, uh, in some cases, we are worse off.